Welcome to What's Left, a weekly political discussion challenging the mainstream left. I'm Eduardo Barca, the co-host, teacher in socialist and deliverance, and community advocate, Gemma Aborto Sotomayor. We're online at whatsleftpodcast.com. You can find that link to our site in the episode notes. You can also find our personal social media handle, well, mine, as at Don Eduardo Barca on Instagram. Please subscribe, rate, review, turn on your notifications, and share your favorite episode where we found this episode. Thank you. We also have shirts if you would like to ask for, for any merch please contact us as well and he will certainly help you with that all right now as a part of the routine before we start the episode we have some shout outs now <laughs> yes um, shout outs from and andy's andy's classroom correct from my middle school that i work at arm prep um i guess these shout outs are for brandon brandon who um Basically, is prepared. He said he has three extra PlayStation controllers because the students at school have broken all mine, um, and he's going to sell those to me. But we'll see. Uh, so thank you, Brandon. <laughs> we'll see if that happens. Um, and Jesus Fernando or Fernando, really, um, who is a uh, uh, who asked to be shouted out, and he's a wonderful student in my six B class. So very precocious, very mature young man. So shout out to you both. <laughs> a quid pro quo. I shout you out. Give me your PlayStation remote control. No, I'm, 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 I'm paying money, but I got to make sure that his that his parents know that you know we're making this deal. I don't want him selling me stuff. Yeah, so uh, I got to figure that out. But but it would be a good deal for him and for me. So I, I, it could help me because those students busted all my play, my PlayStation controllers. Oh my! All right. Now, back on to business. Hey, Andy, you and I had a discussion on yeah. Saturday. No, Sunday. And mm -hmm. we came up with a few ideas for this week's episode. Why don't you share that? Well, we landed on this one. Um, I, I had had a conversation with uh, Dea, a woman who's trying to, who had tried to, who had homeschooled her, her child a year ago. She's also trying to do her own freedom school. And she gives me regular updates. And I'm kind of on, on a board for something that she's doing as well. Um, so we consult each other a lot. So my, my conversation with her just reminded me about that. I've, I've made my own journey with education. Eduardo, you, um, have had a journey in education. I wanted to kind of give people an update on where I think those things are at. And as I was telling Hema before this episode, I kind of like to think through what I, what I'm doing, because I feel like there's what I think is happening in education. And then there's what I'm doing in education, and I don't know if those are connected. And I'm not sure if they can get connected. I'm trying to connect them, but uh, I just want to talk it through. So uh, that's that's this is selfishly an episode for me about me, in my opinion. Um, although I, I know Eduardo, you have some thoughts about it, so of course you can. And then I know Hema, as a expecting mother, is definitely having thoughts about education as she thinks of bringing a new life into the, into this world. So I hope all that stuff gets brought into this discussion, but in all honesty, I want this to be most focused around me. <laughs> As I mean, call Eduardo, the white man trying to just <laughs> climb over the brown <laughs> Things don't change. <laughs> no, I'm going to invoke my white privilege right now and just say, I'm, I'm playing my white privilege card and saying, okay, you two, Brown people, please be quiet. I got to talk. Eduardo, who reverse his ass? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, uh, we're going to jump on that. <laughs> All right, Andy, uh, let's see. So why don't you start? One thing, Eduardo, start? but you do understand, like, because I know that you're doing stuff and you're you're doing some change. So I do think your story can come in here, but I, I hope do you understand what I'm saying in terms of when I say I'm hoping to share all this with you guys so that you can kind of give me some thoughts and guidance. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, where do we start? I guess. Let me, I think, let me start with this, right? Um, so I'll start with just, I've been a school teacher in public education for over for over 20 years um at one point in my life i thought there was a difference between public education and private and charter school education like that public education was 
better, but that it all, but I also still thought that all of education, because it was education under capitalism, had problems, but somehow public education was better than private and charter education. Um, those, these last few years have, have disabused me of that, have reminded me what I should have known all along, that all of education, all institutionalized education serves to train the, to train the labor force, both mentally and physically, to be laborers uh, and to basically do what they're told, while also having the skills necessary to create the equipment and machines that the capitalists need to run and rule society um, in the way that they want. Um, so education, institutional education is a propaganda camp as well as a training camp for here's how you do what we need you to do and here's why you will do it for us uh, and you will do it while accepting the fact that you are going to be robbed of the of the wealth of the value of your labor every second of every day um and you will accept exploitation you accept oppression you you know and that's that's been the that's been that's what education is really about is about training and acceptance of a, of an unequal order um so that's that's how i've seen it coming up into 2000 2020 right um and I was reminded of that from COVID, that that's really what this place is. Um, so that's the first thing I want to say. Um, and, and then, of course, I've had my own journey, which was because of not wanting to give information about my COVID status, my vax so-called, well, the, the shot status, um, that I had to leave my job and got a new job at, at this middle school, um, which I am currently teaching at. Um, and they did not request that information of me, require that information of me. Um, and I was fine with that. Um, and I was teaching at a middle school for the last two and a half, almost three years. And I have to say that, like, I, I certainly love to be back in the classroom that again, the, the experience of teaching remote was the worst and reminded me of how much what I believed that I believed education was a social endeavor. Uh, between teacher and students, between teacher and parents, between students and students, and that that's what education is. Um, that, or, you know, whether I believe that those labels of teacher and student, I'm not sure about those anymore. But, um, but I, and also at Aram was probably the place where I really reconnected with my colleagues again. Um, I was very disappointed with my colleagues at, at Mission High School, um, and Aram really taught me to feel love and, and camaraderie with my colleagues, which I really appreciate. And I planned on pretty much retiring there, uh, which I would say would be in the next two or three years, um, but still looking for a non-institutional education experience to be part of. That's partly why I was you know, staying in touch with Dea and staying in touch in the freedom community because I've wanted out of institutional education. Um, and, uh, and so, but things have changed at ARM. We have new leadership. It's, it does not feel the same way. Um, and so I've decided this is my last year I'll be teaching at ARM. And I've ha been looking for work. Um, at, and I think I've mentioned that in, this ep in some of those past episodes. Is that correct? Or is that not correct? I don't know. I know you've mentioned it personal on 101s, but I don't know if it's ever been on record there. Yeah, no. Okay. Well. Um, and, and initially when I, when I had made that decision, um, which was probably in December in that very, the very week that I made that decision that I, I'm not going to work here next year, even though I planned on working here for another, that working at arm for another three years and then being done. Um, then an opportunity presented itself with a, a, a friend of mine. And I, I don't know if you, well, I'm not going to say the person's name, but a friend of mine who is working outside of education in a freedom school, like something that deals with homeschooling parents. Um, it's called Live Well. Um, and he was basically leaving that position and he's saying, hey, Andy, I think you'd be great for this. And, and I jumped on it and I interviewed with the person who was doing that. And she was like, she was very excited. I was very excited. And it would actually, it would pay less than what 
I'm currently making, but I felt it was worth it because uh, this was the what I, this is the experience I wanted to have. Um, well, I think uh, the person who was who was saying he might want to leave that job, I think seeing the speed with which I acted on that, I think also made him kind of question. And he ultimately said, no, I'm not going to leave my job. Um, and so I was, I told him like, look, this is not a situation. You're the person who helped me get this job or even see the opportunity for this job. So I'm not going to make this thing about like, you, this is your job. So I, I just then told the, the woman that I'm not, I'm not going to do it as long as Jammin's doing it. Um, so, uh, um, so then that opportunity kind of went away, which was a disappointment for me. Um, and so I found, an, I've had to figure out where I was going to teach next. Um, and ultimately what I picked was another middle school, a middle school, literally right across the street from my middle school. And there was an opportunity to, to teach at some private schools and to teach in schools that where students have much better background educationally. I've never taught in that environment. I'm actually curious what it would be like to teach in that environment. Um, I think there's, I'm in, when I was applying for those jobs, they often give you more creativity um, in terms of education. Oh, that's one other thing I want to say about why I'm leaving Arm. They were like going to give me a scripted curriculum next year. Like they were basically saying, here is the curriculum that you're going to teach. This is what, and I was like, in addition to the environment, the environment being toxic, you know, being from the top, they were like, no, this is what your curriculum is going to be next year. Um, and I'm one of the few teachers at my work who doesn't operate on a, some sort of scripted curriculum. Um, which is something I want to talk about in terms of what I think is happening in education. Um, and, um, and that was, that was unacceptable to me. I like, so I was looking for a level of educational freedom where I could decide more what I'm actually teaching from a science teacher. Um, Cause I don't believe I don't, I've tried some of these things and I've read some of these scripted cur curriculums. They're awful. Um, I can say more about that if you want to want me to. Um, but uh the more freedom was found at some of these private schools where, and I, uh, that was appealing to me. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to be like, I've never taught, I've always taught where classroom management is a really major feature of my teaching, like figuring out how to get people on board. Um, but ultimately it was, it was an experience I had with a family that was struggling with their kid at Orem. And I, you know, I was, on Saturday morning, I was willing to Zoom with that student to get her caught up on some of her work. And the family was just so grateful. Like they were like, I met the father on Zoom, of course, I met, and I already met the mother. And there was something about that experience that just reminded me like, you know, wherever I work, I want to work. I want to work in the kind of environment that allows me to build this kind of relationship with parents. And these are the parents I want to have this relationship with, because if something changes, in the environment in Oakland, I want to be with parents here trying to figure out what are we, what are we doing together? Um, and I feel like I have a better chance in building this kind of trust with them. If there's ever something that's going to happen or step, step off in Oakland, that's meaningful in terms of fighting for liberty and freedom, socialism, revolution, whatever, some version of all those things or any of those things, I realize I want to be with this community of people and I feel like I have a much more of a chance of work of building trust with them if I just, as a teacher who is always trying to reach out with them and help them if, if I have to. Um, and I think they were very, very grateful that I would take a Saturday. And I, I know it's, I know it's meaningful that I do something like that. But for me, I was more like, this is a cool opportunity to get to meet, to work with the student, but also get to meet the parents because I knew I was going to meet them. And so that. I don't know. There was something about that that secured for me that I did not want to leave far from the school. Um, and so when the opportunity came to go to a literally another middle school right across the street, which serves very similar population, it was actually going to pay more, um, actually puts us in a better financial situation, which that's not unmeaningful. That's meaningful to me. Um, that's what I chose to do. Um, but let's be clear. It's it is institutionalized education. Um, and I, I don't know what to do about that. Like, I, I don't know what to think about the situation I'm in. Um, and cause I, I'll say this last thing because I think when I think about what has to happen in education, 
I think education is being transformed. It is no longer about propagandizing or getting workers' minds right, getting workers' minds to do what workers are supposed to do. And to kn- it is no longer that. I believe education now is about training, not training workers, but training our replacement. Education now is about creating a massive amount amounts of data that humans will perform for our capitalist masters <laughs> and in the process of that train essentially train ai of all different levels to learn our behavior replicate our behavior predict our behavior and ultimately control our behavior and then at the end of the day we're being moved off like we're being we're being put out like uh i do believe that it's that when if you're at work and the person next to you, like, and, and a boss brings somebody to say, hey, can you show this person how you do what you do? You are training your replacement. You are training the person who's going to take your job and you're going to no longer have that job. And that's what I think, that's where I think capitalism is going with education. Education, and all fields actually are about this, but the educational field is really actually about educating the machine and educating the machine about us, about us as educators. As educators, that's why I think script, scripted curriculum is so important, and educating the machine about humans. That's why they need to see, it's it's not going to be enough for us, for them to monitor our development from zero to 18 or zero to 21. They need to do, as Allison says, womb to tomb, because they need to collect data on the entire spectrum of human development, because we are the ones who are being controlled, but more than that, we are the ones who are being replaced. And that's what I think education is now about. And so I want to say that whole kind of speech. Um, and I'm not sure how I want to, I want to figure out how to more align what I'm doing to deal with that. Um, and first off, I guess I want to hear if you guys kind of what you think about me saying there's a difference. Do you think that's a difference? I think there's a difference there. Obviously, I think they're both bad, but I think the second one is even more dangerous than the first one because the the first the first type of control the capitalists always knew they had to deal with this pesky thing called the working class, and now the capitalist is saying we're kind of done working with we're kind of done dealing with you, we're going to replace you, and I still think there's a problem in that like there's a crisis that will come as a result of that. But who cares? They don't. I, that's not going to help workers. The the project they are on is one, in my opinion, of replacement, and that is where I think education is now moving more in that direction. Which which should see, which is what we're experiencing, that physical brick and mortar schools are going to come apart, and that homeschool operations are going to be assimilated into a kind of a an electronic web, which would put a situation where workers are actually even more isolated as they are all connected to, to a kind of matrix. Um, I see in my mind like that matrix thing, but not just as energy, like in the matrix, people were batteries or bat or powering a battery, but here you're feeding this thing data and information about you so that this thing can simulate you, predict you, control you, replace and create you and then replace you. Um, and that to me seems like so homeschool isn't really a way out if you are still connected on the web homeschool just becomes a more isolated way you become dependent on the on the beast that is replacing you um and of course institutionalized education still is playing that role of trying to feed that but i think that's being broken apart and so obviously keeping that together or not keeping it together doesn't help in any of this so I don't know how how useful is what I'm saying. I, I don't know. I mean, for me, there's a couple of things that I it brought up for me to think about. Um, because I've always I always had a problem with higher education when I was in higher education, like in university. I, I had a problem with it, and it wasn't so much the the curriculum or the teaching. It was rather the cost of and what the cost of it is now. And how even if you think you're going to get a degree 
to make to get out of the wheel to get out to break the cycle you're actually more in the cycle because now you're an indentured servant because okay. you're having to pay these high you know tuition costs and college education is crap I, I i do think that the same similar issues that you're seeing in middle school and in high school as far as indoctrination and the curriculum are also in college at a higher level where you think that you are somehow more intelligent if you went to college that you learn something and you don't you just keep doing the same thing but in a different learning a different topic maybe at least that was my experience um I can get a little bit more into that but what did bring me pause was you saying the the feeding into kind of like the matrix because where I had a problem with higher education was in the cost of it. And I was just telling people, you can be successful without having to go to college. There's many things you can do without getting a college education. Now I'm thinking, well, maybe that was the whole plan all along. The plan was first, they they need the working class need to think that they're breaking the cycle. We need to get them in line to aspire to do this. And once we have them in line and think that this is the way out, we're going to put it so that it's way out of reach. So that even if you do try and get it, you're just screwing yourself. You're digging a bigger hole. And I, I didn't think of it that way before. I just thought about it. It's a waste of money. Now I think about it. Well, maybe it was planned that way because there's a reason why government refuses to regulate the cost of higher education, right? And it might be because that's the plan. But, I mean, there's other things, but I also want to allow for a lot of them. I- I, I have a question for us to consider. I uh I have I have meddled in different systems of education, whether it be, you know, starting off as a public school student, uh, having raised, you know, a foster kid I fostered a child that went from from public to private, uh, to public, to no, 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 to a community school where teachers would be heads of the school rotating, not a principal. There wasn't any principal. There was teachers would rotate being that head of the school. And then back to private. And then finally off to England and <laughs> doing the whole <laughs> schooling, unschooling uh, with uh, kids in England uh, with the music festival scene, joining the circus, doing that, and uh, kids not going to school at all and learning when the time was right. So I, I feel like I, I've had an exposure of different types of systems to be able to to educate a child. And then now I have my nephew, who I'm a part of this life, and he went from, you know, having been just the first six years of his life around to mostly family and friends and other kids. And then finally going to school, sorry, to five. And then now I'm, I have thought that organizing will mostly have to happen with public school. I mean, that's where the working class is. It's not in private schools. It's what my thinking is. I think that private schools normally, like depending on the, what, how much tuition someone's paying, like they are mostly run by people who have money and it'll be hard for them to think about, fathom what it's like to be with other kids who don't come from a sector that is working class. And so I have recently come to idea, the idea that maybe I, that's where I need to exert my energy in. Uh, and, and, I, and, I, and I see your journey, Andy, that at some point we came to opposite ends. Like I was doing, a, during the lockdowns, I was doing a, a home learning and then you were fighting for public school and you actually attacked the fact that I was doing home learning. And then I remember quite well, Andy, you, you said, that's exactly, you told me, that's exactly what people are doing. They're leaving public education, you said to me. 
and 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 essentially that's i mean you can continue doing that for your nephew but you said to me but that's what they want us to do he told me i don't forget <laughs> no i guess because the reason the reason i say that is i think that was an early description that we had because we talked about this on an episode and yeah. in reality during that episode i was like I think the way you're doing it actually is the way it needs to be done. No, Andy, this is a private discussion we had. Yeah, like that, but that was like, and the, that represent, and you're right though in saying that's that that's that transformation that where I where I was still a defender of public education at that point. Yeah, and then um, that's what I'm saying. Now I feel yeah. like we've switched sides. Yeah, suddenly I'm I'm the defender of public education, and you're saying no, we probably have to leave the system altogether. Public education, private education, and you know, start creating yeah. communities where we teach our own children. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And def definitely, I remember trying to burst your bubble, thinking that homes that that the model you were doing. I do remember that. Yeah, and you know, the thing is, I'm at a place where I I'm struggling and trying to figure out how do I organize families that. I don't see movement. I just see that see me as a resource, as only how do I get this document turned in or, um, you know, we want more English in our schools, even though that's a projection from them because immigrant parents are struggling with their own English. They don't know that children can work magic with their brains, with multiple languages. Uh, and so I, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. So I, 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 I would come to think that we need to stay in public education and not go to private schools, not go to, that's how I see it. But you're in a charter school. And so it's a mixed bag. You have kids who some, some pay and some don't. And, and the kids that do, the, the families that do pay, like, excuse me, that don't pay, I'm sure come from that communities of Oakland that, you know, you could organize with. And I, I don't know what, maybe it's private school, maybe, excuse me, maybe it's because it's elementary school and these parents are, I don't know, but I'm struggling. I'm struggling. My, I'm struggling myself trying to figure this out. Uh, what, what I saw, so I posed that question for the three of us. Do we give up on public education and go our our way back into our communities and organize there and work with families within our communities, our neighborhoods, or do we fight back and take back our, what we consider to be public education, which just is a system of taxpayer funded money, but you basically have to be controlled on what you think because you have to teach according to the curriculum, the standard. I can tell you right now that I think we should go that I'm leaning more towards like even the old school way, which is where you get a tutor. You're not part of any system necessarily. You just have someone that's well-rounded that teaches your children a little bit about everything. This is a conversation that I had with Jorge and it was kind of like, well, what do we do? Cause I'm leaning more and more towards home. Who's Jorge? My husband. <laughs> my husband, my baby daddy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm leaning more towards homeschooling because I working in working in the bank, I, I work with the new generations of college graduates. And I also deal with as customers with people that are coming in and are dealing with their finances. And just it's allowed me to see a whole a bigger picture, I guess, of education is failing, is it's completely failing our, our, our communities. And you trying to make a change in public education, you're you're looking at you would have to dismantle it all. So in Nicaragua during the socialist revolution, that's essentially what they did. They they dismantled all of education. They set forth new topics, and they were teaching more things of what we would think like home ed and just. Of course, there was the push for teaching people how to read and write. But it was also teaching them about sciences and not just the indoctrination that the Somosas had. All of this to say that I, I don't see anything being taught in whether it's private or public 
or communal schools, what I think that would make my child be a well-rounded person. I just, I don't see it. And I understand where you're coming from, Eduardo, as far as staying in the public sector for the purposes of community organizing. But at the cost of the children, like you're going to expose, you're going to put the children in school to be indoctrinated, hoping that you can move some needles and move some families to be able to come together to organize, to fight this bigger battle. In the meantime, you're leaving the children behind with this crap education. You're feeding into the system of them being data mined. You know, and and I'd even be willing to, I'd even be willing to be like, okay, fine, give your information, be data mined. There's no way of escaping it in my point of view. It's it's everywhere. It's in everything that we do. But I'm allowing my child to be indoctrinated. I'm allowing my child to only be taught not critical thinking, to not be to not be able to think for themselves, to not be able to make decisions for themselves, to really analyze, to make them a well-rounded person. I'm allowing them to be part of a system that's going to train them to be monkeys that can then be disposed of. I'm not setting them up for success. And as a parent, that's that's your biggest concern because you want your child to be set up for success. You want your child to do better. But doing better doesn't look like making more money. It doesn't look like getting becoming a doctor, at least not in the future world that I see happening with everything that's going around for me it's just giving my child the opportunity to survive to give the opportunity for my child to not be part of the herd and I just don't see how you're going to do that in public in any type of institutionalized education at this point any type because even in private you still have to follow some type of standardized testing because you still have to get into the colleges you still have to kind of be part of the system so even in that I, I don't you just have to pull them pull them out pull them out Eduardo, do you want to respond? I, I have some things I could say, but do you want to respond to what Emma's saying? No, no, no. Go ahead. <clears throat> well, first off, I do think data mining can be avoided, but you have to disc you have to unplug. Um, it means pencil and paper. It means textbooks. Or it means books. It means that nothing is done online. Um, and uh, that that can that can be a non-data mined um experience educational experience and and I want to I know you use the term data mine when people hear about it it's like people think about data mining as like well I'm, then advertisers are going to sell stuff to me yes but that's not what data mining is for data mining is for training your placement you know and for educating your ruler to how to know to know more about you so they can control you um and but but large but the biggest part is not even the control part. The biggest part is is building AI on all spectrums of society, um, and that is going to be used to replace teachers and replace ultimately even the students or few, the, the entire labor force. And once you don't need any labor force, you don't need students, human students anymore. Um, and and that's why the, the, the scripted curriculum is a big deal because um, a whole. I'll, I think virtually every teacher I, that works in my school teaches from a scripted curriculum, and they're kind of surprised that I don't that I don't do the same thing. And what that means to me is that my my colleagues and my fellow workforce really have no idea what's going on. They have no idea what's happening because the scripted curriculum is literally just a step a stepping stone for how do you train a computer to teach. Because that's why they need to create a script. They need to see if you will run that script and then see how that script works on for you and that and that student. You iterate and you just you just eventually they're going to build AI to help you do the script. That'll be like a paraprofessional. And then after after a while, they, the 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 AI will learn how to do the script and we'll be done. we'll be doing the script. And that's that's why you do that. It's met, it's automating the the, the experience of, of teaching. Um, and and teachers have teachers think it's just like oh that's a lot of work to make my own curriculum this is easier if i don't have if i can just use a scripted curriculum i also want to say a scripted curriculum i find trying to follow it it confuses me things that i think i know it, i feel like i'll get dumber about by just looking at how they're trying to teach it in this script um so i've never liked them um i don't like it in terms of just doing it and i certainly politically now i'm opposed to it because of what it stands for um one thing I notice in the in the difference between me and Eduardo is 
I and Eduardo, like like you were saying, in terms of I used to be much more about organizing workers. I notice that I'm not even thinking about that right now. Like I've kind of pretty much said I don't see any worker around me in education that has any idea about what's coming. Um, and I haven't I haven't met that worker yet. If I did, then maybe I would be talking about organizing with a fellow worker. Um, I can't say I've met, necessarily met a parent, but I, I do notice in my in, in what I'm saying, it seems like I feel like there's more of an opportunity to potentially organize with parents in the future than I feel like with my own colleagues. As much as I like my colleagues, but they they seem to have no idea about what's coming. Um, and so my whole my own orientation, and when I think about organizing parents, it's like for some future crises, not for something that's happening right now. And probably my biggest the biggest thing which gets me is I know that as long as I'm in institutionalized education, the better that the parent thinks I'm doing, the better that the student thinks I'm doing, oh, I like what Mr. Lipson's teaching. Oh, I like how, you know, that teacher is doing that. I like how they're working with my kid. All I'm doing them is pulling them and keeping them in the system by doing that. The more they like what I do, the more I'm hurting the cause and hurting them. And that is a conflict for me. Um, but that, I don't know exactly what to do about that. And apparently I, I feel like what I'm trying to find is somebody who is doing this, but who believes that there's no way we can do this with tech that believes we have to like, is that what I'm looking for? Is that, and that's what I'm trying to answer for myself because I'm still in institutionalized education and yet I'm trying to find a some sort of place to find a partner in doing something. I actually think in Live Well, when I talked with the with the person who ran it, she understood the tech problem. She also said that parents push you to try to get the tech because they know their kids have to go to college and they know they have to like learn skills that are tech related. So she felt that was a pressure that was that Live Well had that she did not necessarily like. But at least I had a in that regard, she seemed to understand that there was something to be fought here. Um, I have not found any consciousness around that at all, like any, zero. And I'm not really sure what to do about that. And, and for me, that's where the fight is. Like, there's no fight around Medicare. There's no fight around Palestine. There's no fight around wages. <laughs> for me, the fight is dismantling ourselves from the tech. That's I, I, I'm I'm very I'm putting it very starkly, but that's that's what this looks like to me. And I people should tell me if I sound like too harsh or too too one sided, or I'm not seeing a certain way. But you know, maybe Eduardo, I, I guess you should say something. Oh my goodness, Andy. <laughs> You should say more about before I assume why you say there's no organizing with working class in public education. That's based on my, it's just my experience. Like I see nothing around me, like literally zero sense that there's anything wrong with this internet shit. Zero. Except maybe that, you know, we don't want advertisers to get them. That's not, a, that doesn't mean anything. That has nothing to do with what's going on. It's like if if somebody was coming into your sc school and making a using a three D printer to recreate the children in the school, don't you think people would be worried? Wouldn't you be worried about somebody three D printing children and trying to essentially move that move the living children out and putting the three D printer into the thing? That's what's happening right now, and yet no one seems to be aware that people are being replaced. And we're part, and we're we're at the forefront of that, because we're we we did because we went that year into remote, and we've just bought in since Google Classroom, online this scripted curriculum that it's like so. I don't know if I'm my bar if the bar I have is way too high, so I'm 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 going to be isolated because of that. Um. I mean, I'm going to go to this event that a person is doing some organizing around Palestine because I want to meet the guy and you know talk with the guy. 
But the only thing I, I don't believe in anything unless we're unless we're literally unplugging ourselves from the machine. And I don't mean institutions. I literally mean this thing we're talking on right now. Because I know this ends this ends poorly for all of us. This 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 does not go well if we stay with this. And this is the only thing. All right. Emma? I have mixed feelings. Um, and my mixed feelings are there was a time when I felt I felt really really heavy in my thoughts. And I just couldn't find anyone in my circle besides Lipson, a lot of them, but regular people mm -hmm. that felt or saw anything the way that I did around just kind of what's going on and how things just don't feel right. Things, it, it just, you can tell something's wrong. That gut feeling is telling you that this is not how things need to be, but people just either weren't acknowledging it or weren't understanding it, weren't coming to terms to it. I don't know. All this to say that in TikTok, I've been able to find other people that have voiced similar concerns that I have and have been able to vocalize things that I've been thinking for years. And it's not people in my community. It, it's people spread out. So in that sense, it helps me validate that, you know, it's not just me in my crazy thoughts, but it also helps me kind of work through some of these things and also see that there are other people that had a similar experience to me and either were able to work through there and now are putting it out there to kind of help other people. So in that sense, I, I see where it helps. Now, is that worth the sacrifice? The, is that worth the cost? Because I also understand what I'm giving up to be able to feel quote unquote validated or to feel like I'm not, I'm not, it's, I'm not out there just by myself. Right. Can I clarify that when I, I don't actually have a problem for myself, even the fact that currently I'm forced to work in this master's place in our, in, in our, in the capitalist, this is in the capitalist dome right here. I, because I have nothing here. I have nothing physical near me. And in fact, the first thing I would do if I ever was successful at building something physical near me is report it to people online before I unplugged, right? You know, and I would only unplug because we had to, because the state of the struggle said, now we must unplug globally because we're no longer safe. But I'm, all I'm saying is that the revolution will not be on the internet, right? The revolution, it, and it is not, and I completely agree with you, Emma, I would think it would be a mistake if, if you have nothing around you then at least find you can find something out there that can help you kind of like know, okay, keep your bearings. But ine inevitably, I do believe, you know, well, you have a family and you you do have something. And, and but something will have to grow that are people you're around, in my opinion, that that is not connected to this. Uh, that's that's kind of what I'm getting at. But I don't know how to get a I don't know how to get a foothold or a handhold on anything, and I don't know where to find them. And I don't know what to do in the in the interim, um, except to complain to say that the problem I see feels completely disconnected to my actions because I have nothing to act on them on other than complain about things here or try to discuss things here. Um, and and in a sense, I'm no different than you with TikTok, like because it's just people helping me online make sense of my of my reality that I know has to be done offline. And it might just be that you have to just do it. Meaning, you know what? Go off the grid, do a class with just textbooks, no technology. I'm sure you'll find a couple of parents. Like I know that that's that's kind of where I'm leaning in with my child. And I know that there's going to be other people out there. It just means that it's not going to be a big thing. It's probably going to be you and two kids. And then as things kind of work out and people started joining, in, which I'm surprised because Eduardo, I, I was under the impression that you were trying to do something like this during COVID. Mm hmm Yeah. So, you know, it, it, again, I am coming right now from all I know is, is institutionalized education, both public and private. 
And now I'm looking at the current state of affairs of the world and what I want to do for my child and what would I envision for my child, right? And it's definitely not that. But I'm surprised that you guys are not really in the same page now. Well, yeah, I mean, I just, I don't know where he decided that this wasn't it. Because I thought that that's, I thought that's what he liked to do, you know, have like the study classes out of his garden and be more that because that's something that I would love I would love for my kids to be outdoors learning about things outdoors being exposed to mother nature and just understanding their place because that that's my biggest thing my biggest thing is and I was talking to you mentioning it before we started recording which is people don't understand you are a human being that produces oxygen and you are part of a bigger thing that's called mother nature and the world and you impact it you're not as uh, outside of it you're not separate from it and i think that that's why we're we're perfectly fine becoming mechanical robots and feeding into this technology and just giving that away because we don't even see that as it being a part of us you know gotta get kids back there stop playing video games go out there and, and roll in the grass get dirty well here's the question i think as we go as we're in Inquire, we're having this inquiry with Andy. You said you, as a parent, you would be interested in having your child. You're leaning more to having your child be homeschooled or 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 community school somehow or me. outside. I'll keep my child. I don't care. Huh? I'll make it up. Me. I'll make it up. I'll make it up as I go. And that's the direction you want to go in. That's the direction I'm leaning in. Yeah. Uh. What's your hesitation? Because Eduardo, I couldn't see a bet a happier place for you than sitting outside at your garden with children talking about a topic and discussing it. Mm-hmm. But somehow you're 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 quick and, and willing to just say no 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 let's let's get to the classroom. It's not the classroom. It's it's where I think las familias are, where they, where we where I can find them, where we can be together. That's where I think we should be. Okay. How I I have struggled <laughs> forming <laughs> collective of people so that I can try to tell them, you know, let's ditch the curricula. <laughs> that has been hard. That has been very hard to do. <laughs> uh these very same working class parents don't want to ditch the curriculum. <laughs> they want to do as the as the curriculum says, as the teacher says. Uh, it's interesting because in 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 Mexico, like I'm be, having been raised into countries like here in here in the USA, there are. The, the Mexicans that I meet here are come from poor backgrounds. That's why they left Mexico because they, they leave they leave the country because they're poor. They come here to make a better life for themselves. And rich and middle class Mexicans stay in, in Mexico. And when I have visited me schools in Mexico, <laughs> such as Waldorf schools in Mexico, there's all kinds of creative ideas about how to have a curriculum that's best fitted for them and permaculture and i visited some of these schools and i'm like oh my goodness these parents aren't afraid to ditch a curriculum and they're more interested in having a, something that's wholesome for them the community for their child and here i meet mexican families and they just want to do exactly what the curriculum says it's so beloved do you understand why mexican, it's not just mexican families by the way it's a lot of latin it's mixture a mixed bag of Latin American families, by the way, but it, it's it's them that that they say want more English, they want more maths, they want to do more more of that, and it's just 
it's like, oh my goodness, I, I don't, I don't know how to move away from that and move into more of like, how do we govern our school and make parents teach our children? That's what I'd like to see. <laughs> uh, so my answer, my quick uh, default answer to, to Andy would be this one, which is going to be my struggle. Stay at your local school. Do not organize teachers. Organize families first. <laughs> Take over your schools. And have parents teach their children. And then see if teachers want to participate or not. Or leave. Have them leave. Because ultimately, I think teachers have no desire from what I have seen. Very little desire. I don't mean all teachers. Very little desire to break away from a system. They're not as radical as I once thought. And families are the ones that, and that, that, that if you, if, if my, this is my thought experiment, convince them to come into the classroom and teach their own children. This is the I that, that I have been trying to bring to fruition for a while, for a long time. So I'm answering Andy's question, but then it's like, am I doing it? I've tried. <laughs> I have tried, not this time in Colombia, but last year I tried. The year before that, I tried. <laughs> the year before that, I tried. It's been a long journey of struggle that made me leave the country and over to Colombia. <laughs> Not the real reason. But, you know, like I, I have tried. And so the reason why I laughed earlier before, you know, I, I took a break and left, it's because it's like, oh my goodness, I think I have the answer, but it's not working out for me. So how can I give you, you know, I don't know. Maybe I need more people to infiltrate the school, like you, Andy. We need to be in the same school together. <laughs> Three, four people will do enough. <laughs> I'm not I, sure. I do think it makes a difference. If I do believe, if you and I were in a in a some sort of institution, if you and I were somewhere together, there would be a chance <laughs> of trying to do something. I, I do believe that. Like literally, that's just the starting point. I just need a second person. Right. Um, the thing that's interesting here is, first of all, I kind of what I'm this describing is I'm still in institutionalized education, not in public education. It's a charter school, but it is those same kind of families. Most of this, I think virtually all the students get free education, but it's paid to paid for by some <laughs> corporation um, as well as some public funds because they got a charter, blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> so I'm still in institutionalized education. Um, what, and I will, the other reason that I would probably not think, I think it's a bit of a, well, why I will probably tend to move away from institutionalized education is I actually believe that 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 these brick and mortar schools are being taken down, like that the future is to move away from those sorts of schools that charters are being in or public are being and even private are being in that by and large. In 10 to 15 years, we are going to see a lot if things are not blown up or whatever, but we're going to see a lot fewer brick and mortar schools of all sorts. Um, and we're going to see more, you know, people online getting their education, personalized education through what they do online and, you know, staying at home and, and connected to homeschools really. And that's why I feel like it's important for me to like, what I'd like to be that person who's connected to homeschool parents and maybe homeschool workers who is saying, don't go to the other trap. Let's actually go to the thing. Let's, let's try to find the thing. The reason you left institutionalized education is, is to be free of that. Well, they're just, they're, 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 they're putting you into another trap that is going to even be less free at the end of the day. So let's find something that allows us to actually have real autonomy. I think that's what, that's what speaks to me. Um, and Eduardo, I don't actually feel the desire to tell you not to go in there because give it a try, you know, like in the same way that I'm going to try something, I welcome you trying it. And unfortunately we're not going to work in the same place right now because we're, we're located somewhere else. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, but I actually think it's true that I'm actually just looking for one other person to be near me that would be thinking about this in the same way that you and I are thinking about this. And if I found that second person, that would be my home to, to work from. A couple of things. 
Lipson, my child is your guinea pig. Go forth. <laughs> uh, Eduardo. Fourth of May, uh, the, may the fourth be with you. <laughs> <laughs> Amor, I think you're missing, you're, you're missing why you're not reaching those parents. You're not reaching those parents because those parents are poor. They only have one goal, and that is to prosperity, to have their children have a better life than they did. And they have been sold this idea of education means a better paying job, means you're going to be better off. And education, the best education is in the United States. Again, that's what, that's the lie that our people have been fed, which is why our people make all these sacrifices to come here. I saw it with my mom. Stick to the curriculum because that curriculum has been proven to make Bill Gates, to make Steve Jobs, to get all these <laughs> people, which is not true. It's a lie. But the the lack of information for our people is huge. And, I, and that's why you see that disparity where in Mexico, they're like, no, let's try something because they know better, because they see it. Whereas the working class, the poor people that migrate here, they're just cops in the wheel. Like they're just caught up in it. I would say, go to your local churches. Go to your food banks. Go to your um where I see go to your to Las Pulgas, you know, where people are actually there venting and working and get and I I believe just a thought. I, I don't know this for a fact because I haven't tried this out, but I do believe that if you talk to someone about something outside of that environment they are more likely to listen and be able to have a discussion. Whereas if you're doing this in an after-school program where the parent is going in, they're thinking, I'm going to talk about my child's classes and why they did that poorly. That's what they're trying to get there. Because again, they have to worry about getting to work, the childcare, putting food on the table. They're, they're not, you're not that captive open audience that you need. But if you get them in a different environment, maybe it'll be different. I would say try that. And if that doesn't work, then listen to Lipson and keep trying what you keep, you're keep you doing right now. I just don't think you're going to get there. Because I know for a fact my mom, who is a very, she's big on critical thinking. My mom is big on giving a big F you to the big man and she'll fight and she doesn't care. And she's outspoken. In a classroom environment, there was no way that she was going to talk about anything other than that curriculum and why I didn't get an A in that class. <laughs> Outside of the classroom, my mom was like, oh, no, fuck them all. <laughs> right. So, and my mom comes from that same poor background. She wants prosperity for her children. Then that's the curriculum. That's the schooling. So I challenge you to do that. And then get back to me. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> as we continue being, as Andy continues being a teacher in school, Gemma about to bring life this year and gives us an update throughout her child's life to see what worked and did not work. Yeah. And as I double potentially into two worlds, Mm -hmm. <laughs> of Let those two <laughs> uh, this will continue being I think the ongoing question and where do we go from here I, uh, I think we don't have a settled answer by the end of this episode but what I do appreciate of this conversation is we have revisited something after the very beginning of what's left, you talking about your organizing efforts at, at Mission High School, then the lockdowns, attempting to organize families, and then having left, and then now having a reflection back on those times and the current time of your of your working period, Andy. Mm -hmm. And so I think this episode is obviously necessary for us to be able to revisit those times and to revisit the, the present. Because we've had education, public education, as part of the continuous conversation, a thread in on what's left because of our background, because of also people who have come onto what's left. Um, we interviewed some organizing teachers as well. Uh, and so I think that 
we'll come back to this discussion, right? Like this isn't an ending, like we can't settle this. Yeah. And we continue with our experiments and our projects outside of what's left. Me continuous in the mission district. Hema being the advocate that she is also working with families and people and immigrants and the community in San Francisco and having her journey with it as a first time parent. And you, Andy, with what you have to share with us on your ongoing journey and struggle with education. I don't know how else to say this, but there isn't never, how do I say it? There's never one answer and we have to, I mean, the, the inquiries only take investigation and exploration on the ground. That's what I mean. So it's not like we will have it. We have to report back on what, what's happened. Um, and I think what's been helpful in this discussion for me is number one, the fact that it it is basically saying, I'm just looking for another Eduardo, but somebody who's close to me. <laughs> Actually, I mean, Eduardo, he's in San Francisco. I'm in Oakland. We're still close, but I, I think I need an Eduardo in Oakland, like an Eduardo. An Eduardo oh, I need there. an Andy back where you were living. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also like either in the same workplace or in the same struggle of some sort. And now I think in listening to what Hema said about the where you're likely to find the possibility of people being open to hearing something else. I think that's why I I want to I think that's why I want to stay in this community because what might get me the opportunity to talk about what I think is going on in education is not going to happen inside of education. It's going to happen when something else is taking place here. We're doing something else. The 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 electronic noose is still going to get tightened, um, and it's going to get tightened in other places as well. So, I think that that note that thing that I had in my mind of like there may be an opportunity to organize here in the future with families or parents. I think is related to what Hema's saying that I'm not going to be able to have a meaningful conversation in my school about this in some ways because the stakes are too high, and then there's people aren't willing to take risks and in, in many. We, we talked about giving birth and risk taking and things like that. People are going to be very conservative in the beginning when they're not sure about what's going to happen. Um, but I think the possibility, if actually something takes place in Oakland that I'm a part of, that puts me in contact with the families that I happen to be going to my school and we're doing other stuff, maybe then I can find an Eduardo. That's what I'm thinking. So that's really all it is. You got to find one Eduardo, then you got to find a second, and a third, and a fourth, and a fifth. You know, and then you can start to do something. And I want to say, Brandy, Thanks to the reverse. How do yeah. I find it? <laughs> uh, Brandy is an Eduardo. You know, that's that's the thing I did not did not um, know was going to happen. Is I I did find another Eduardo with Brandy. And who is Brandy for the audience? They uh. know my <laughs> wife. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I was forced to call out what I saw. I just yeah, want to make exactly. sure the viewers, your listeners. <laughs> true, true that. That's equal opportunity. Yeah. yeah but you are so funny. That's funny. That is funny. You know, as a side note, I, I like maybe three months ago, I was reading that Unified San Francisco Unified School District was looking to close a couple of schools because of low enrollment rates. And how they were looking to merge. And it just brings me to think, is it, was it the exodus? Was it the low birth rate? I don't think it's a low birth rate because that's just, that's going to kick in a couple years down the line. Is it people doing more homeschool, doing more alternative things? You know, I, I haven't seen anything that talks about what's costing the low enrollment rate other than San Francisco Unified School District is looking to close schools. Yeah. So maybe there is something out there, Lipson, and you guys just haven't you you haven't been connected to it because it hasn't been made public. But where are these students going if they're not enrolling? Yeah, and at the end of the day, you do remember whatever I find at this point still has to hit a wage number that allows me to pay rent. You know, like that was three the other years. thing. You said three years. Yeah, like in three years, I think I'm going to be much more open to. Not having to hit, you know, I think I would still want to be able to earn something, but I think I'd be less, much less tied to that. And then it will be, then it really will be my activism, I think, 
kind of thing. Just food for thought. Well, let's conclude. Yeah. Well, thank you, folks. Thank you. This is always un taller, a work station for you <laughs> to come back to and dump your thoughts. On yeah. Don't be jelly. Yeah. Let the man talk. <laughs> <laughs> Let the man work through his emotions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's do this. Well, that does it for this week's episode. Uh, What's Left is a weekly political podcast slash channel challenging the mainstream left. We post information about our topics and our guests on the episode notes, where it's on this episode or on our blog at whatsleftpodcast.com. Uh, you can find past episodes to this podcast slash channel there and connect with us. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. What? <laughs> Sorry. Just... <laughs> You make it's him so nervous, Emma. I know. Because <laughs> I called him out on his bullshit. I'm staying in school to organize. <laughs> <laughs> I remind folks, if you like anything you have heard here, please subscribe, rate, review, turn on your notifications to any of our platforms on the Spotify, iTunes, Podcast, Speed Shoot, Odyssey, YouTube, or Telegram. You can find our blog and any of those links in the episode notes where we found this episode. If you would like to give us feedback about something, something you heard, or suggest something for us to co cover, contact us at our blog. You can also contact us for shout outs, apparently, with <laughs> Andrew Libson, Dr. Andrew Libson, Mr. Andrew Libson, or however they call you at your middle school. <laughs> and I'm Eduardo Varque with co host Andy Libson and Gemma uh, Aburto Sotomayor. Thank you all for listening. Ciao. Ciao.